So Fangoria is back. The return of Fangoria as a quarterly magazine. Well, first of all, you have to explain what the hell Fangoria is. I mean, I guess if you're if you're watching this, you 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 know Fangoria, but I mean it's I mean a few years you're gonna have to explain to young people like you know Fangoria. What is it? It's a magazine. It's a magazine. Is that like a vinyl record? You know, <laughs> I mean it's like oh the magazine. That's what I that's what I I read at Barnes and Noble and then never buy. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's uh it feels very 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 vintage. Very vintage to to get into to magazines uh, you know circa 2018 or, or or so forth. But in many ways the magazine is still a, an an excellent way to deliver information. It really is. I I still think there's something about it that's not uh, outmoded that, uh, you know, the batteries are not going to run out. Uh, you know, you can't, you don't, you don't have to worry about, uh, the, the, the Wi-Fi reception for your magazine. There is something nice and substantial, uh, to, to, to Fangoria. And I mean, it's iconic. I mean, Fangoria, you know, first launched, uh, in 1979 and throughout the eighties, it became like the, the, the horror magazine, the number one horror magazine, it really uh, launched a, a new era of the fantasy film, of the the horror film of the 1980s, the the, uh, the Wes Cravens, the George Romero's, the Toby Hoopers, you know, all and all the little filmmakers, the Frank Henenlotters, the, you know, the, 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 uh, the Stuart Gordons, the Brian Usna, you know, you'd see magazine art, Clive Barker, my God, the, the staple of Clive Barker. I mean, that, I mean, in the late, in the late eighties, in the earth, the late, 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 late eighties, uh, 87, 88, 89, and, and then 90, it really reached its pinnacle with the coverage of Brian Usna's films, uh, Stuart Gordon's films, and, Cly and, and Clive Barker, Nightbreed. I mean, I, that was really, I think, kind of somehow the kind of the pinnacle of Fangoria. All those issues of uh, on, on Nightbreed and the, the photo spreads. And, 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 I mean, the movie Nightbreed could never be as good as the way it was hyped up. And that was the way that many, many, uh, many movies, I mean, they were hyped up in, in Fangoria and they were just little, little tiny, like independent films. Like that you, you just, they today, you'd make them today and they'd show up like, you know, uh, you know, on video on demand, you know, they'd be have, you know, like a couple of web pages might have, might do a nice little review of, they'd be full color, full artwork. Uh, you know, I mean, there were, there were like the, immediately in my head, the dead pit, the Dead Pit, my God! I mean, the 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 full color artwork on the Dead Pit, and almost like it felt like an an issue devoted to the Dead Pit, you know, uh, little thing things like that. I mean, I guess Dead Pit now is is now most well known as that that VHS cover that had the 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 glow up the glow lights, but I mean, this was a regular thing with this Fangoria magazine, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the reason why I'm into horror film, the reason why I'm interested in horror is Fangoria. And so, so many good memories, so many years. It, it reached the pinnacle really in, in, in the late 80s. Uh, and, uh, and then, I mean, that's really when I started uh, reading it. So, so maybe, you know, before that, uh, you know, I kind of started reading it like a few, kind of a few issues after it was the big uh, 86, 87, 88, where you had like Reanimator, Evil Dead, you know, the, the biggies. You know, and even, you know, around 88, 89, it was kind of the, the peak, but it was also, you felt like it was slowing down. I remember the first issue that I ever begged my parents to buy me, it, it had uh, the Tales from the Dark Side, the movie on it, and Spontaneous Combustion, I, I remember that. And, and then the Nightbreed issues, and then and then I begged my parents for a subscription to Fangoria, and I got it, and I subscribed for many years, and, you know, Fangoria would come in l those those black those black bags that looked like a porno mag they were sending it to you half the time it seemed like the the uh the the, the bag was like ripped and the magazine would be all screwed up and fucked up and ripped your expensive fangoria magazine was screwed up half the time i think it was because people were curious maybe they were looking at what the hell is that i think half the time that that, that plastic was just so like 
it would go through the machines and it was, it was just very easy to rip. You know, it, it would, and it was, I, I grew up in Florida and the hot Florida heat that, that, that black cellophane that the Fangoria was shipped in would, would like, I mean, it would just melt. It was, it was not, it was not a, a, a really nice, stable way to, to, to ship a, an expensive magazine for the time. Expensive. I mean, the magazines were, were still like five, six bucks. I mean, that was yeah for the era kind for me at least <laughs> the kid with no money expensive, so Fangoria went throughout the throughout the nineties and and again I said the heyday was the eighty eight eighty nine, uh they they changed a lot of things horror started changing you know the the advent of scream the slowing down of of Friday thirteenth and Halloween and a nightmare on elm street those those things kind of went into to hibernation or there was a few films you know uh, you know of course the, the the new you know the the friday 13th film where jason is like this uh, e uh demon bug and then at night and uh, the new nightmare on elm street which was just kind of you know kind of reflective like breaking the fourth wall you know actors playing themselves type of thing Scream, which is kind of this post, so everything was kind of postmodern. Everything was kind of like looking at itself and reflecting on itself, and uh, things were things were changing. And Fangoria, I mean, the Fangoria, the magazine itself was changing. the The way it was printed, the the quality of the printing, I felt, kind of went down. And uh, you know, lots of X Files episode guides and, and that type of stuff in in the, in the magazines. And uh, and uh, then in the early 2000s, there were just a series of uh, changes in Fangoria, uh, changes in management, uh, changes in ownership. Uh, in 2010, uh, Chris Alexander of Rue Morgue took over Fang, took over the the editorial uh, of. of uh, energy of Fangoria. He became the editor in chief in, in Fangoria and started to turn. I think turn the Fangoria in the right direction. To be honest, I think what what Chris Alexander was doing, uh, getting a little more eclectic. Uh, there would be articles on Salo and uh, and uh, Alejandro Hodorowski and 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 weird stuff. Midnight movies, which I think was a good. And then having those those painted covers. That era of Fangoria. It's not that long ago. Just a few years ago, with the covers which kind of conjured images of Basil Gogos and and famous monsters of Filmland. Beautiful, beautiful things. But uh, but the but the the. the the prices in the magazine, the, the the newsstand price, just kept rising and rising and rising. It was like nine dollars nine ninety five, and and it was like, whew, you know, it started with like seven dollars and eight dollars, and in the early two thousands, creeped up. But um, oh my god, oh wait, what one of the you know one of the, my my accomplishments, <laughs> one of my big accomplishments, what you know, and things that I I just always feel proud about was um in uh, I don't remember even I should remember the the issue of Fangoria but it was a it had it was Hostel 2 on the cover and my movie Frankenstein's Bloody Nightmare was being released and it was in the chopping list the chopping list was the uh, you know the, the you know the the articles you know Fangoria over the years, you know, it had the, uh, the the letters to the editor, the chopping list which was like upcoming horror movies released on video and film Terror Teletype, which was about stuff that's, you know, kind of new and upcoming, just announced. And, you know, all these, you know, David J. Scow, his his um, his kind of op-ed uh, editorials kind of later on in the, in the, you know, in the few issues into the magazine. And then the the uh, the video reviews, the 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 video, the, the video the Cyclops, Dr. Cyclops, the video reviews. I mean, they, the these these were iconic. But uh but uh, I was in. I, w I got into the chopping list. My movie Frankenstein Night Bloody Nightmare got into the chopping list right next to like the corn. There was a corn nemic uh, uh, little picture of him uh, playing that uh, serial killer, and uh, and and it was and and I and I was there. I was dying. In it was me. It was my dead face. I was like me. 
and I was dying, and, and uh, the, the actress was stabbing me. It was a bright, bloody picture in Fangoria. I was like, holy crap, holy crap, oh my god, I'm, I'm, I've arrived. I'm in the chopping list, and it's. I think it mentioned my name even. It was like, wow, wow, wow. Uh, and so I was so, so, so happy about that. And Fangory.com did a story on the movie as well. So it was, it was, it was great. And, um, so many, so many years, so many, and, and so many movies that you'd read about in, in, uh, in the, 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 the video eye of Dr. Cyclops. I think that, that was that, was that the, the name of the review? They gave, they really were, as far as doing reviews of horror movies, I, I really, I didn't think they were that great. They missed a lot of films. I mean, there were there are a lot of movies that I would read about in 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 D Video Eye of Doctor Cyclops, like video reviews, and uh, they would do a really bad review of the movie, and I would be like, "Oh, this movie sucks," you know, and, and, and I would never watch it. And then years later, I would I would uh, I would watch the the movie, and and I would just just randomly, even in my head, even. You know, it's it's weird. It's the thing that's imprinted in your mind. If you read a crappy review of a movie when you're a kid, do you ever notice, like, even you, you carry around with this, this idea, this movie might be crap, this movie might be garbage. And then you watch it, and you're like, wow, there's some really good stuff in this movie. I mean, it's a low-budget horror movie, but it, it's no it's no better than the other low-budget horror movies that they that they would rant and rave about on, on in the video eye of Dr. Cyclops. And you wonder, like, what was going on? Was it payola? Or was they, you know, because they... Cause I remember specifically that they would rant and rave. They rant and rave one time about this movie, Dark Age, which was like this uh, alligator movie, which is a good, but it was like, and then and then there was movies like uh, Hell's Bloody Acre, which they did just hated, and and I and I watched that. I was like, wow, you know, that's that's pretty good, you know, and and it was like that was, that happened over and over and over. In the video eye of Doctor Cyclops, so I always felt that I I I never you know grow you know a few years after I was I was a little bit older you know when I was a little bit grown up I was like man these reviews are very deceptive I think Video Watchdog was the exact reverse Video Watchdog had very good accurate reviews and no matter where a movie came from they would give a movie a fair shake you could trust a Video Watchdog review you couldn't really trust a Fangoria. Uh, a video review. There was always something deceptive about the content of those reviews. But the whole package of Fangoria, the color, the brightness, it was incredible. So now I, I give you the preamble of what the hell Fangoria is. Uh, and now, I mean, after years and years of being neglected, I mean, I think their, their last print uh, issue of Fangoria was back in 2015. I mean, it's literally been a few years here since, I mean, they, they released in that time, I think, uh, four digital issues. And uh, that, that, I remember that last issue of Fangoria, it hung on the news shelves for so many, many months, many, 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 it was in Barnes and Noble for so many, many, many months. And now Fangoria.com has reawakened and, uh, and they, they now, it's a, it's a real, it's a cute, it's a cute web page. It's a cute web page, which is, it's modeled after, if you remember the print ads it, back in, uh, or old issues of Fangoria, there was this picture of, uh, the pit and the pendulum and they would have some the pithy, uh, copy, you know, and it's modeled exactly out, out of, a, a, a an advertisement for a subscription. And so you can, scroll down and when you click on the individual things in the subscription which used to be check boxes like you that you would mail out to them you would check oh i want this issue i want that issue uh it takes you to their instagram and facebook and then if you like i want to subscribe it takes you to their their page where you can subscribe they want to do a quarterly uh you know in to kind of step step back a little while the the the, the Fangoria went through years of different ownership, but lots of debts, all everything. And in early 2008, Fangoria, everything Fangoria was purchased lock, stock, and barrel by this company, Cinestate, in Dallas, Texas. And so now Fangoria is in is in Texas. They're, now they're they've moved from from New York, uh, you know, down to to Texas, and. Uh, 
and and they will they intend to publish quarterly four issues a year 100 pages and they uh they they're going to uh they're offering a a subscription here of uh, a a a a a uh, a deal a a a a bargain rate of now $15 an issue ooh ooh it's it's i guess it's not that bad it's not that horrible and then apparently the the regular rate is going to be like 19.99 an issue they're going to have limited advertisements in it and uh it's uh <laughs> it, I, I it's a high, it's a heavy price i i i i i i got to be honest but i think i i think they're they're good they're they're on the right path i think with it uh, i think they're I mean, even Chris Alexander's era in 2010, because in the early 2000s, they started to change the logo. They started to kind of uh, do do a lot of things. And Chris Alexander immediately brought back the original logo, which should never have been changed. You know, that's like the Golden Arches. You know, the, the little the F, the Fangoria logo, that's like the Golden. That's like that's like McDonald's saying, you know, we want to change it. No, you can't change that. You can change everything about the goddamn magazine. You cannot change the fucking logo. That was a, that was that was absurd. Who the fuck even thought about that? Modernizing that anyway. Uh, so they brought the logo back. And I'm sure that the current Fangoria will carry on with that retro uh, vintage logo, and uh, uh, and you know, and they brought back uh, Tony Timpone and Michael Gingold. Apparently, they are going to write for the magazine, and they're going to. Um, they're going to supervise. Uh, they're in some kind of supervi supervisory, supervisionary position. They're in a visionary position, <laughs> and I, you know, and and I just like the the Fangoria.com now. The 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 cuteness of it. So I, I think it's good. I mean, it's a little expensive, um, but that's what magazines cost these days, and 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 it's a shame because it does make me hesitant about picking a magazine up for twenty dollars. Basically, you know, I one thing one wonders if they're even going to get to the newsstand. I mean, with that kind of, with that kind of price, I one thing I, I've always wondered about magazines is is like, because it, it feels like they just want to go this full color route, and and I, I a lot of the magazines that are keeping their newsstand price at five dollars and seven dollars, they're not full color; they're black and white. Or Shock Cinema, who's been for years, I they may have upped their price, but. The last uh, issue of Sox, Shock Cinema that I I bought a number of number of years ago, um, it was only like five or six dollars, uh, maybe seven dollars with sales tax. I I think that's a a reasonable price for for a magazine. I just can't. Uh, I mean, nineteen dollars is a little is a little too heavy. But I I personally like a magazine that is not full color. I I, I this may be weird, but I personally I. You know, one thing I loved about the old Fangoria of the late 80s and early 90s is that there was a large amount of the magazine that was that was uh, black and white because it's it's very easy to read because, I mean, the main thing about Fangoria and these magazines is their text is you're reading articles about things. And it's very easily readable with if you if the text if it's a black and white page the text stands out it's very easily readable black text on a white page, and with magazine with this glossy magazine print you can make pages that are like black and white and that have color image but it's so distracting. There's something about the black and white. It's like reading things on a Kindle. It's very, even though it's a hundred times better than a Kindle because it's an actual page. It's not some kind of e-ink illuminated, uh, you know, uh, LCD type uh, type gizmo. It's just a, it's a one wonderful, you know, well printed. I think well printed black and white is is the way to go. And 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 honestly, I I would I would pay seven dollars, six dollars for a ninety percent black and white. Uh, Fangoria or 90% black and white horror, horror magazine. Maybe I'm an anomaly. Maybe going back to black and white just wouldn't save you enough money to cut the price down as, as much as as you'd want to. Who, who, who knows? So many good memories with Fangoria. All the years of the spinoffs, Gore Zone, Toxic Horror, the 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 uh, the, 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 the spinoff magazines, the little one-off magazines over the years. Uh, the special magazines, the the uh, the Fangoria video guides, 
uh, to, to the horror videos, Fangoria movies in the early 90s, so it's Columbia TriStar releases, Mind Warp with, with Bruce Campbell and, uh, Children of the Night with Karen Black and, and Severed Ties with Oliver Reed. And then in the early 2000s, this is what a lot of people get, Fangoria started releasing, uh, DVDs got into got into uh, partnership with this company Bedford Entertainment. They started releasing uh, acquiring rights to movies like uh, I Zombie. Oh man, I Zombie on DVD. A lot of little little movies. That was during the horror boom, the horror DVD boom of the early two thousands, which for a very uh, a minute people were releasing things on DVD and making money. And uh, it was uh, it was an incredible era. And uh, Fangoria was that. I Zombie's a great film. Dead Meat's a great movie. So many memories. So many memories. So many good. Fangoria Radio with Debbie Roshan and uh, D. Snyder. That was from like about 2006, 2007 to 2009. What happened to those? Did, were those ever recorded? Is, is, there, is there an archive of those? Or has that just kind of gone to the ether? Uh, uh, who, who the hell knows? But uh, Fangoria, a lot of. I hope that that. I hope some something. I hope Fangoria.com can do something with those archives, even sell them, make them somehow available to people. It'd be interesting, you know, because the Fangor Fangoria.com was also a great website. They did articles on everything. They did articles on Frank, my movie, Frank Says Bloody Nightmare. They did all articles on all these little independent horror films. It'd be horrible if that stuff went into. It probably is going to go into the ether. It's probably going to disappear. But. Anyway, Fangoria is back quarterly, uh, four issues. You can subscribe uh, for whatever, $60, $70, uh, or $80 uh, uh, when it's off the sale. So it's something to, to look at, something to, yeah, something to get into. I mean, the, the, I mean, they, they were doing, they were doing like uh, $5 issues, digital issues. Uh, that was the last four issues. I think you could buy them for like five thirty. Uh, but yeah, it would be great if you could buy like a DVD or a Blu-ray with all of the old Fangorias on it, legitimately. You know, and like a remastered version that would have like Mad Magazine, a few like uh, the Mad Magazine CD-ROM, which had all the old issues. It'd be wonderful if you could do that with Fangoria, but uh, or Video Watchdog. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, th there it is. Uh, Fangoria is back.